talk about the Hannity since President Obama's taken office. The debt ceiling has been raised seven times, and the nation's debt just keeps growing and growing. And now, once again, America is poised to run out of money, this time October the 17th. But after mounting pressure to raise it once again with no conditions, House Republicans are saying, no, 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 not so fast. On the debt limit, uh, we're going to introduce uh, a plan that ties important spending cuts and uh, pro-growth reforms uh, to a debt limit increase. Now, the president says, uh, I'm not going to negotiate. Well, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't work that way. But Harry Reid said that the Senate won't pass a debt ceiling increase that is loaded down with Republican amendments, and Democrats keep pushing their worn-out talking points, and they're hoping that a debt default, a government shutdown, would hurt Republicans politically. But... Could it be a coincidence that the president's job approval numbers has dropped now to 43%, the lowest since March? 49% of people polled disapprove of the president's handling of his job. It's the highest it's been in two weeks. Here now, the co-hosts of The Five, Beckel and Andrea Tantaros. How are you guys? Good, how are you? You said weeks and then years. You should said years. Oh, sorry. Sure. You're correct. I stand correct. Um, <laughs> That's the only time Sean's going to say that during this entire segment. Let me ask you a question. The president said he won't negotiate on the raising of the debt ceiling? Yeah. Is that responsible? Well, I don't know if a single president has. No, so I, I know... I mean, every president, every president since uh, before Roosevelt uh, has had a debt ceiling increase every year by the Congress, and none of them have put any on it but an increase of debt ceiling. Yeah, so if a senator doesn't support them, what would you say about them? It's, you know, when Obama said what he said about Bush, he was running for president. He was preposterous. I mean, it, politically, it's an easy thing to say. I don't want to increase the debt ceiling. It's, a, you know, it's, bad, it's bad for the country. It's bad for your grandchildren. And in the end, it's all about politics. So, so why, why not, why shouldn't the Republicans just hold the line and say, fine, you're going to get your debt ceiling increased, but we're going to put in measures so we don't keep having trillion dollar deficits. I think they need to hold the line. And I think the base, after what happened the last time they had this showdown, expects them and is demanding it from them. And if Republicans have any hope of winning in 2014 or even winning the White House, they have to stand firm. They can't cave again. And so we're having this food fight over tactics. The goals are the same. I mean, Marco Rubio has said that. Our goals are the same. We are a member of the same party. We're shooting inside the tent, but the, but the tactics are the issue. I think the tactics should be united on this one, and I do think that Boehner is absolutely right, and we should unite around him, have a united front, and not have any Republican break off. You know, well, the it tactics, is, a tactic that puts the full faith and credit of the United States uh, currency in jeopardy, is that a good tactic? But we hear this every time, that a default would be terrible, and it would be. But what's the alternative to keep spending? That you would be terrible as well. Me. I mean, you, th now we've learned how to do this. I know we they did. Told I'm going to scoot, scoot, okay, scoot a little closer. I'm going to scoot a little closer because Bob, it, we positioned that I have my back to him, and I don't like to she do that. He doesn't listen to me most of the time. That's not true. Well, uh, that's sometimes. True, but that's right. Go ahead. I am you torn on this. I'll help you out if I can. Uh, right, no, I'm ahead. torn on this because if you look at Greece, if you look at England, if you look at Australia, these countries that have conservative leadership now had to hit rock bottom. So there's part of me, Sean, that does want to see us feel a little bit of pain. So people actually feel what the spending that Bob and his friends have done in Washington, D.C. How much more pain can we have when we have one in five American children in poverty and we have all of this debt, when you add to the seven $19 trillion, $90 trillion in unfunded liabilities, it's over. I mean, yeah, but, but it is over. Let's remember that the many currencies in the world are tied to the dollar. If the dollar goes into default, you're talking about a worldwide financial crisis of enormous proportions. If I did on the budget, that's fine. I understand that. I would do that, too, if I were Republicans. But not on the debt Well, side. it would force President Obama to do something. It would well, put him do, in a do position it on, to don't do something. Don't pass a budget. Something. Cut down the government. I mean, that's... You know what? A, I, I got to be honest. The one, Bob is right in one sense. His side has an advantage because they know that the Republicans, they don't want to be blamed for shutting down the government. And that's the problem they have. You that's cannot right. negotiate from a position of strength if you're afraid. And they're, they, to me, Republicans are kind of gutless. The establishment Republican guys, they don't have a backbone. They're afraid they're going to get blamed. They're afraid of the political well, fallout. And, and they are blamed, but they're going to be blamed either way. Exactly. So, so just so might as well do something right they in the should, process. They should stand off. I mean, it's game of chicken, like the movie Footloose. Every single time, this double dare, double dog but dare. But it's not a game it. of chicken because they already gave in. They already said, I give. But this yeah, but time, in the new game of chicken, they can't jump off the tractor. Let's, let's they assume, have to be Kevin Bacon. Let's assume for the moment, I mean, the Republicans got blamed the last time they shut down government. I, for one, I'm not so sure they would be this time. But 
if anything, we've got to keep in mind is we can't play with a debt ceiling. Shut the government down if, you, if you've got to. Stand firm on that, but don't stand firm on something that would wreck the monetary system of the world. I mean, it, it, it's, that's just going You know what, far. Bob? I think you overstate. It sounds a little bit like the sequestration. Predictions yeah. of doom and gloom, and none of it ever happened. Well, but, the world but this, didn't is, collapse, this is a whole, whole different situation. I mean, you know, that $17 trillion you talk about is in bonds that are backed by dollars. And if those dollars are defaulted, what happens? You know what, Bob? I'm really not that afraid of it. Well, well really, maybe a, maybe just naive naivete. I know, I know what you're low sour. You probably I, aren't worried about it. I don't want to see damage to this I, country, I, but I do think you, you're cracking yourself up. I Go do ahead. think, on some level, Republicans are saving. President Obama from his own mistakes, from his own bad decisions. I agree with you. And why do we keep saving him from the spending from Obamacare? Let them own this, and they will, especially Obamacare. Let them own it. Let Obamacare go into effect. People will very why soon you, realize. Do you not want this, these Republicans to fight, though, and stand on principles? Ted Cruz was saying earlier. Sure, time. absolutely, I do. But I think we're disagreeing over certain tactics on how to do that. All right, but tell me what the, ta the other tactic is. What's the other tactic? When do we get to why repeal would Obamacare? Why wouldn't Republicans make the biggest issue repealing the car <coughs> for members of Congress and their staff, or pushing for a delay of the individual mandate, which, True. to their credit, they're already doing? St that Vitters offered his amendment. Ted yes. Cruz mentioned a and lot. And hammer that home every single That's day until 2014. Make them own it. It's called Obamacare. Don't give them any reason to point the fingers at Republicans. I don't see any reason for not increasing the uh, delay in the individual mandate for a year. I think it's fair. And I actually think you I'm nervous that they will. The well, I'm nervous will. that they will. I'm nervous right. that they will take this Republican they, idea. They'll do it because they don't well, want it as an issue. Through, they don't yeah. want the full impact. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, I'll be blunt about it from my standpoint. The individual mandate cost votes in 2014. Put, put oh, it off wow. for a year and then... So you're admitting, so it was, admitting. it's a failure. I you're admitting it's the a truth, disaster. Andy. That's one of the things you've got to understand. But that's why it's a, yes, already sir. a failure because the employer mandate was delayed. Well, that, but it's better than delayed a year, right? Yes, till after the elections, because it's so bad. Right. Well, I don't know if you're talking about it's You're bad. admitting that the individual... You're no, admitting no, the whole I'm bill just, is bad. I don't want to... Look, Obama and his administration are so far behind the curve on the message about Obamacare that you're not going to be... It's going to cost votes. It is going to... Don't question about it. So why not delay it as long as you possibly it's can? It's not the message. It's the meat of the bill that's a mess. The whole thing is a mess. I think, I think Andrew's got you here. I don't think... I, I don't, I'll give them another three years, and I don't think they could. Let me ask you a question. Philosophy. You know, you say that everybody in America gets health care, right? They go to the emergency room. If they don't have insurance? Right now, yes. Okay. What if a kid goes in and becomes a quadriplegic and has no insurance? Who okay. pays for him? We played this hypothetical game in, in, no, in the green room before we came on. Mm. Andrea, if you faked your own death and came back to life under an alias, how much would you get? Bob, I don't know. All I know is this. Premiums are going up. People are losing their job. They're getting less hours. It's a disaster. And even Debbie Wasserman Schultz says, mm. we better fix it. If this. you 